joke on top of your head. Especially a me teenager. Fat, frizzy haired, and the money my dad made on two jobs, butcher and postal server, with the help of welfare powdered potatoes, didn't allow for the mandatory hip junior high clothes. Although I had big thighs and hair like frayed wire, I did have a great personality. And when I turned 16, I discovered my boobs. And so did Maurice. Maurice drove a dry cleaner's van that belonged to his uncle that you can still spot today cruising around San Diego. I knew somewhere inside that he didn't deserve me or the person I was soon to discover I was. My best friend was LaVon. LaVon was beautiful, but because she had a strict mom and I was a good girl, her mom only let her hang around and go out with me. LaVon had green eyes and long brown hair. And although she was white, it wasn't until years later that I realized LaVon's mom named her a black girl's name. LaVon liked me because I was fun and funny. We did prank, call, prank phone calls until we choked from laughter. Some mean, some really funny. We jumped into strange guys' cars on a dare. We shoplifted seized candies. We had a blast. LaVon and I were in 10th grade, but because she was dating Doug, who looked like James Taylor and was older than us, one night we got invited to a party with the juniors and seniors. I ironed the shit out of my steel wool hair and grabbed my cost-less imports Indian print halter dress. Yep, my boobs were finally here and I was going to show them to the 12th grade boys. The party was at someone's divorced mom's ugly San Diego, San Diego apartment complex. We walked in, well, my boobs walked in first, <laughs> chugging out of our Boone's Farm and Annie Green spring bottles of cheap sugar wine. It was smoky and loud. Black Sabbath's electric funeral blared. LaVon found Doug, and after a flirty batting and lowering of her repressed girl eyes, they were off making out on the orange beanbag chair. Maurice de Mayo, I do not make up this name, started walking in my direction. Maurice was a popular senior. He was most known for two things, his huge doofro and the fact that he drove around in his uncle's dry cleaning van with De Mayo dry cleaners proudly printed on both sides. If you could see past the fro, he was kind of cute. He had large French-like features and a sexy smile. As, he, as we walked, I saw him scanning the room. Most of the cute senior and junior girls were already coupled up with guys linking out, dancing, or puking. Me and my D's were standing in the doorway. I was forcing down the wine I pretended to actually like. I guess he figured that this fat 10th grader with questionable hair might be an option. He strutted up to me in my rack. I seriously could not believe it. This is the guy who dated Maxie, the stoner cute, almost phantom-like cool girl that was way out of my league. Maurice and I talked for a minute. It was almost hilarious. He did that thing where he started to talk, looking into my eyes, and then finished his sentence, staring at my boobs. <laughs> Let's go for a ride. In the van, I said. Yep. We got in, despite the fact that I had to do an embarrassing hike up with both hands to get my short legs into the seat. I masked it with a high-pitched, wow, this is cool, to cover the grunt that helped haul my ass into the car. <laughs> he pushed in an eight-track of three, three dog nights. One is the loneliest number you'll ever do. And we started driving and talking. I thought, wow, he's actually talking and listening to me. Then we pulled into a driveway that led to the empty parking lot of the Kmart on El Cajon Boulevard. He had his hand on my thigh, tapping out the rhythm of song. He turned off the engine and lunged in to kiss me. I could not believe that we were making out. He was smashing my mouth and jabbing his tongue in. It was weird, but all I could think about was going back to that party and telling LaVon, I made out with Maurice de Mayo. He kept wet kissing when, we lifted, when he lifted his whole body and put it right on top of mine. He was hugging and pushing on me and groping at my breasts, which were now way free of the halter. He felt sweaty and hot and smelled like brass monkey. I kind of enjoyed the kissing and the boob stuff, but now his whole body is on top of mine, hard. I was squashed in the passenger seat. I couldn't even kiss anymore. I tried to find an airspace to breathe. He was heavy, pumping on me, then started to lift my dress up. 
Then it all came to me in a flash. This is it. This was it. I was going to lose my virginity to a guy whose hair was bigger than his head, who probably didn't even know my name. Um, stop, I said. I don't want to do this. Stop. No, he said. Stop, I said. It's too late! He screamed. I will never forget this phrase. It's too late. I didn't know. Was I unaware? Did boys have some physical limit that made it impossible for them to stop? Was I going to break something on his insides? A muscle that once they started humping and kissing on a slutty fat girl, they couldn't possibly stop without being paralyzed? It's too late! He shoved his Levi crotch on top of my underwear. No, I said, and in a moment of brilliant clarity, I reached over and grabbed the handle of the stop on my side of the van door. Maurice just dropped, fell out and smashed onto the cement parking lot floor and rolled. He didn't say a word to me the whole way back to the party. I reached for the van door handle, my savior, and got out. I went in, got Levon, a tab, and a bag of barbecue lace potato chips, and walked home. Thank you.